out there. This presentation is being recorded. I'm sure it showed up on everybody's um, screen out there. My name is Carla Farley. I am this year's current president for Smart Coast California. And I think we got a sheet there that's gonna show you just a little bit of the agenda. Most importantly, if you aren't familiar with the terms, and I love this that she put this on the side there, uh, the quick acronym key. So the California Coastal Commission, CCC, you'll see that a lot. And especially when our um, consultant talks, you'll hear the LCPA, which is a local coastal program. Amendments, of course, SCCA, Smart Coast California, and then uh, the SLR for sea level rise. I got a duck because I just had a whole batch of paper drop. <laughs> So of course it is Monday, right? All right, with that being said, um, we will move forward. And I want to give a little congratulations. We got our new board members coming in for 2022, which is always great. As you can see, we got some great representation up and down the coast. We actually have um, a couple of brand new uh, board members. We see uh, Katie Beacock with uh, Marin AOR. Susan uh, Carney, Rosemarie, and then there's Valerie. I don't know if they're on with us today, but I hope that they are and they can see their names. Give them a big clap and thank you for joining us. Uh, we appreciate all the help that we can get. So um, great shout out to them. Our next year's president incoming is Joe Priang. Joe is on there. Can we get Joe to say hi real quick? I want him to say hi actually. Hi, everybody. No, I mean, say hi. Hi. Can Thanks, say Carla. Hi? Yeah. I'm really excited I'm really, really about excited. it. Yeah, very, mm -hmm. very excited. Um, being a part of this from almost the inception, um, it's quite an honor to, to, to step in and hopefully fill or try to fill your shoes. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Well, we're all on the back of the gas. I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it takes a village, right? It really does. Uh, we have incoming as our vice president for next year, Paul Grisante. And Paul is on there. Paul, you can say something as well. I, I just want to really thank excited. you for, I want to thank everyone for the honor and uh, tell you how much I believe in this organization. And we've proven already we can move the needle on relationships with the Coastal Commission. I can't wait to see what we get done this coming year. Yeah, yeah. All right, and well, this uh, treasurer, Ryan Olejas, is Ryan with us today? Morning, everybody. Oh, there he is. There you are. <laughs> Good Ryan, to see you guys uh, again. LA. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the thank you for the opportunity to serve. I'm looking forward to continuing to be on this board and serving as your treasurer next year. Thank you, very much appreciate it. And then Secretary Jerry Becker. Is Jerry in there? I'm looking at one little strip, you know, how <laughs> so I don't necessarily see down the line there. But Jerry would be amazing. She's been with us for a little while as well. Um, thank you guys all for um, volunteering your time to participate. And like I said, on the backs of the GADS, the GADS, we have the most amazing GADS, if anybody wants to know. Yes, I said it. And I'm owning that one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the most amazing GATS. Uh, they really help us get a lot of this stuff done. And without them, we absolutely could not do it. And you see there, there's Krista. We got Marta and Ryan in there. And Julie, she's somewhere in there too. I saw her somewhere in there. So we got, we got quite a bit of help in the background there, but they, they make it happen for us. And so we definitely, definitely really appreciate them. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you. All right, we're on, on policy update. As you can see, I don't know if you've had an opportunity to go on our website, all that good stuff. Um, we've added a new section there and which is the um, rolling easements that was not on there before. And that's something that we're including to start tracking and keeping up with that. So uh, again, go to our website. You can get a lot of this stuff there. Um, and, you know, if they look at the whole mandates call for the rolling easement being included. And so that was why it became something that we just pulled out now and really put it there. Um, so we're expanding our policies. We added that in. And again, 
smartcoastca.org. You can find all that information there, including the other tiers that are listed there at the top. A lot of good information. And then our current, um, the SLR, there's those acronyms, you guys. I'm going to test somebody and see if they remember it, right? <laughs> LCP efforts. And again, there we have some new ones that are added there that you can find on the website. Um, the website gets updated every couple of weeks. So you'll see this new stuff in there. But we've also included to add the LCPAs that are also withdrawn because a lot of counties are putting theirs in and then they actually withdraw them. And so we're actually gonna put them there so you can see who actually put them in and withdrew them. And you see on this one, we have three jurisdictions in there already that have done such, um, along with the ones that have actually been certified. And so you can kind of keep, keep up with that if you've got some people just kind of tracking it themselves, um, but it is all there on our website. Uh, again, it takes a lot of great work to keep this stuff up and keep it prioritized and have that information available for you guys. All right, state legislation, you see SB1 Atkins, sea level rise, it was a watch position. The governor, governor did sign it Friday. So there's some work happening. There's a lot of things going on in the, uh, the coast. And uh, they put a couple of them here just to highlight for you. You got SB 83, of course, dealing with the sea level rise, creates the sea level rise, um, the revolving loan program that they had talked about. And that is a watch position. I know CAR was watching it as well. I think there's another one that's a counterpart that was actually looking to be uh, adopted or probably has so already, which will probably take over what SB 83 does, but right now it is in a watch position. Please make note, if anybody wants to know what we are not in favor of, SB 433, Allen, and that one is the enforcement, the penalties. We are not in favor of that position. So it expands the Coastal Commission's administrative penalty authority. And um, that, actually, if you go on the website, you can get a lot of details into that. But anything that's going to expand the penalties, we are definitely against that. AB 72, again, a watch position, deals with the Coastal Adaptation Permitting Act of 2021 that authorizes the uh, California Natural Resource uh, Agency to implement options that expedite the regulatory review and permitting process. And if it's going to expedite it, we're all for it. So um, right now we are watching that. And you guys can take note of that. And again, you'll be able to find those. And then the two-year bill, on state legislation, you got SB 627 Bates, which deals with the coastal erosion, uh, the ability um, to install shoreline protective devices and the process of that. And of course, if we are able to do that, we would be supporting that, right? So it requires the Coastal Commission and local governments to approve the repair, maintenance, and construction of seawalls for residential development existing as of May 1st. 2021, unless this would pose a substantial threat to public safety. So again, that's one that uh, is a support position. It is a two-year bill. So take note of that. That gives you just a little bit of a legislative kind of update. There's a lot of things happening in the coast though. So again, SCCA, Smart Coast California or smartcoastca.org is a place that you really want to direct people to when you want to get just a grasp of what is happening out there right now. And you can also sign up and I'll say it again all through this. You can sign up, get newsletters and all that good stuff so you can kind of keep up with where this thing is going. If it has not hit you yet and you are on the coast, it is coming to a county city near you for sure. So... With that being said, <laughs> all right. Next one, where are we? Oh, I got my friend Don Schmidt here with us. Don is our consultant who, again, has just been tremendous in helping a lot of these different counties with the um, process of what do we do, right? What do we do? What do we say? And um, trying to keep us all in that one band, one sound kind of a thing. And that's what we've been doing up and down the coast of California and getting everybody to understand exactly what their real rights were, how they needed to respond for it, and what were the trigger words and the things we needed to look at. And so Don and his company, Smith and Associates, have um, 
been really, really good with that with us. And they've been helping us out. And I'm going to let him take it from here. Um, but remember those acronyms because he's going to go through them real quick. He knows all this stuff, right? Hold your questions until the end because we'll have a question period for him now. All right. Don, uh, are you there? Good morning. I, I am here. Uh, sound check, everybody here. Okay, yeah, great. So thank good, you. Morning. good morning, everybody. And in regards to the acronyms, um, some of you will be pleased to know I need to inquire on one of our acronyms this morning uh, before this presentation. So uh, it's just, it takes us forever to get a sentence out if we don't uh, boil some of these down to the acronyms, but uh, I'll try to, I'll try to keep it uh, moving along here. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, we've been out and about. We're kind of an out and about uh, organization increasingly. Uh, we went to the uh, uh, California League of Cities Conference. You can see Judy there who uh, drove out to help me. This is Commissioner Oranga, ex-Commissioner Howe. Oh, Mr. Grisante, Mayor of Malibu and on our board. This is Greg Cox. Uh, Greg uh, used to be uh, the council for San Diego. This is the entire contingent of, of Malibu there, including their city manager and a couple of council members. The, it was a fantastic uh, opportunity for us um, to uh, really get the word out to the people that need to know we're out here most, which is the city councils and mayors, um, board of supervisors sometime in the future up and down the state of California. We got a tremendous uh, amount of interest expressed. I'm, I'm very, very pleased. Uh, you know, there was people up there promoting uh, the latest in paving, sewer lines, traffic control, software, and then there was Smart Coast California, and a lot of people were popping in and saying, oh, wow, I, I wish that uh, uh, we had known about you before, and we're really looking forward to working with you in the future. Um, and then there was the people on the inland side who uh, had smarmy comments for us that uh, they weren't interested with us until such time as the San Andreas ripped open, the western part of the state fell into the ocean, and they became beachfront, then they would come and they would talk to us. But uh, uh, we also went to a number of different uh, uh, mixers. Uh, we went and had a number of different meetings. I met also, not shown the photographs here, with uh, uh, Chair Alex Padilla, uh, Steve Padilla, excuse me, uh, of uh, the Coastal Commission. Uh, we went to a number of different uh, workshops. Uh, uh, it was quite a successful uh, couple of days up there in Sacramento. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, I lost my slideshow. Okay, there we go. So the, the networking opportunities, you can see some of the different uh, 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 organizations and cities and such that we met with here. Um, in addition to that, uh, you should know that we have been extremely active in regards to meeting with uh, coastal commissioners, in meeting uh, with, with the staff, uh, we're in uh, communication from staff being the Coastal Commission staff. Also, uh, as you're going to hear more about the local coastal programs that we've been working on. Um, increasingly, uh, Smart Coast has been getting very involved in working at the local level. And this is because you as the board and, and your staff have recognized that these course corrections and some of the specifics for the policies that we are concerned about, if we don't get on it early, we're, we're, we just basically have missed the, uh, the party, uh, if you will. And so uh, increasingly, and I'm gonna embellish upon this a little bit more, uh, we have been, uh, we've been getting involved at that local level. Next slide, please. So uh, per the Coastal Act, the Coastal Commission and local governments are supposed to be working together on the local coastal program amendments. This is, this is really uh, uh, an essential component of what the legislature uh, envisioned for the creation of these local coastal programs, that it'd be a cooperative effort between the Coastal Commission and the cities and the counties. Uh, that cooperation is, is, is legally required and it's not working and it really needs help. And one of the things we as your, as your staff are most excited about is that we've been receiving feedback from uh, elected officials and from staff uh, that they want our assistance to help bridge that gap between the Coastal Commission itself and the, uh, in their local jurisdictions. In fact, I was on the phone uh, with uh, uh, the uh, senior planner and the planning manager up at Carlsbad who are working on their LCPA 
last week doing just that. More on that in a bit. So we are primed to be the essential bridge between uh, the counties and the cities and the Coastal Commission while we try to iron out some of these thorny policy issues. Next slide, please. So we've been mobilizing in this regard. Uh, there's been a couple LCPAs uh, or uh, partial LCPAs. There's, remember, there's both a LUP, that stands for Land Use Plan, and an LIP, Local Implementation Policies or Program. Those two together make the LCP. And so uh, we worked with Half Moon Bay uh, aggressively, and there, theirs was the land use plan, not the full LCP. And in that uh, particular case, uh, with a very uh, active and, and effective uh, uh, group of realtors up there in, in that area. Uh, the uh, very uh, uh, troublesome definition of existing development as being January 1st, 1977, as opposed to just existing development was dropped from the plan. So we consider that to be an important win that SEC uh, helped manifest uh, just in this last year. Additionally, uh, we had uh, Morrow Bay, we provided testimony uh, there was a number of people that, uh, that weighed in on that, that submitted letters. It was uh, by and large a win. There were some things that we didn't like. Um, it did have the existing, uh, the definition of existing development is January 1977, which we've had numerous discussions about and at the Q&A, if you'd like me to embellish on the importance of that, I certainly can. They had that in there, but they also had uh, regulations in there in regards to protecting the waterfront and maintaining the waterfront. And now remember, that's hugely important because what certain organizations that don't necessarily see eye to eye with us and certain commissioners, uh, uh, perhaps also coastal commissioners want to see is nothing but manage a tree. And uh, it has been the official policy of the SEC board that there's places where manage a tree is appropriate and other places where it most certainly is not. And the fact that Morro Bay specified that in their waterfront area, their critical tourist and commercial area, they were not going to engage in manager tree, but they would take steps to increase the height of protection devices, bulkheads, infrastructure, things of that nature was a very important concession that there's just places in these coastal communities where there should not be manager tree. They also had tiered responses uh, policies in that, which we were very uh, happy to see because that of course is one of the uh, policies that the board of SEC has adopted. And they had uh, language in there which addressed the takings issue. Should the local jurisdiction engage in any sort of regulation which uh, uh, would result in a taking uh, of private property, then the government needs to pay for that. Uh, so, uh, all in all, a pretty good uh, uh, act uh, on Morro Bay. San Clemente um, had uh, submitted amendments, um, which had a lot of really good information. They were absolutely uh, uh, just tigers in regards to uh, fighting and sticking to their position as it pertains to uh, the definition of existing development. They cited uh, uh, previous uh, legal actions. They cited um, the previous attempts to change that definition in the Coastal Act itself. In fact, it's their letter that they submitted to the commission was probably one of the best, which is in circulation in the state of California. But when they saw the suggested modifications to their action that the staff was proposing, uh, they withdrew their application. They did not have the hearing in front of the Coastal Commission, which is a pattern that you're about to hear more on. Next is Del Mar, um, which has uh, uh, a fantastic uh, uh, mayor down there, Terry Gasolin, uh, who's uh, um, been um, instrumental in regards to working on these issues. And we see it as, a, as, as probably a, a very strong ally for us. They also had a very good local coastal program amendment. Uh, Del Mar recognized that if they did manage a treat on the southern portion of the city, pursuant to the vulnerability maps, that literally almost half of their city, of their community would cease to exist, should sea level rises manifest. And this is due to their uh, geomorphology and the fact they have high ground facing the ocean and if that was allowed to wash away and the homes were condemned in that area, it would inundate the entire hinterland areas back behind there. Um, 
Interestingly, and this was before SEC weighed in, although I, I had some uh, uh, conversations with people down there uh, several years past, the city was originally moving in the direction that was pretty supportive of the positions that the Coastal Commission wanted to take. But when their constituents became educated and realized what the implications were, um, the old proverbial pitchforks and uh, torches started to uh, uh, be gathered up and the council realized this was political suicide for them. And they started taking a harder look and realized they did not necessarily need to just follow the party line. However, uh, when they saw the staff report and what the suggested modifications were, Del Mar also packed up their uh, LCPA and put it in the briefcase and left. Before there was a hearing in front of the Coastal Commission, they just left. And this is, a, this is uh, both an opportunity and a problem for SCC, which I will embellish upon in a, in a little bit. And next we have uh, the Santa Barbara County's LCPA. Um, some of your senior staff uh, have just amazing uh, connections, Krista, uh, in the county of Santa Barbara, uh, I, I must say. And there was, there was a lot of good things in regards to uh, this uh, proposed local coastal program amendment as well. It was years worth of work. Um, uh, we supported the county's LCPA. Um, we activated a CFA. See, I needed to ask what this acronym was. That's a call for action. Um, we had uh, 125 letters which were sent to the Coastal Commission on this. Uh, we were in um, close communication uh, with uh, the senior staff. Uh, Krista in particular uh, was very, very effective at that. Um, we also were in touch with several supervisors. I've known uh, Supervisor Greg Hart for many, many years uh, when he was uh, uh, on the Coastal Commission, uh, uh, back when he was in, on the Santa Barbara City Council, and he's now on the Board of Supervisors. Santa Barbara County also withdrew the week of the hearing. Um, and that was, uh, that was very interesting to us. Uh, and actually, we tried to dissuade them from doing that. We wanted them to get in and argue. We were prepared this time to... Uh, vociferously and vigorously support them at that hearing with testimony and the support letters. We think it's important that uh, these arguments begin to be made uh, in front of the Coastal Commission itself. And uh, the county nonetheless uh, followed their own uh, conscience what they thought was best and so they withdrew. Um, you should know that um, the Coastal staff and the commissioners were very taken aback by this. Uh, Jack Gainsworth, the executive director, who's a good man, uh, he, uh, at the beginning of the hearing on the first day, spent close to 10 minutes admonishing the uh, County of Santa Barbara uh, for withdrawing it, it being uh, a waste of resources, uh, that uh, the staff, uh, the coastal staff's job was to uh, interpret the law as they saw and make recommendations to the commission, and it was the local jurisdiction's uh, responsibility to make their arguments and, and people shouldn't just withdraw. It was, uh, there was a number of commissioners that echoed that sentiment from the executive director, but interestingly, uh, Commissioner Megan Harmon uh, uh, from Santa Barbara area, who replaced Eric Howell uh, on the commission uh, and, and shows great promise for being extremely intelligent and balanced. She, um, she didn't think it was appropriate uh, that the County of Santa Barbara be uh, beat up on this. And um, at the very end, uh, Chair Padilla also uh, uh, said that he thought that uh, this was the part that was very important to me was that whether they liked it or not, they being the coastal commissioners, that these local jurisdictions were their partners and they needed to do a better job of partnering it. And so we think that uh, we really need to be capitalizing on this going forward. So next slide, please. Talk about the upcoming LCPAs. So uh, we have Carlsbad, which is coming up. There's a public hearing on October uh, 12th. Uh, we, had, uh, we had a great conversation, uh, as I mentioned before with uh, the uh, senior planner and the planning manager. Uh, I believe that was on Thursday and Ryan and your staff uh, facilitated that call and appreciate it very much. Uh, one of my uh, senior planners, uh, special project managers and I were on that call. We let them know 
that we are here to support them, SCC, and that they have allies, that there are other communities uh, which uh, are uh, prepared to support them on that. And, and we think that that was something that was uh, uh, they appreciated hearing. We also got down in very great detail on the um, um, on the different specific policies that they have within their LCPA. So that's a, a hot topic uh, item. And of course, the city council will be the last local legislative action before it gets uh, submitted to the California Coastal Commission. Uh, next, we have Sonoma County, uh, which is coming up on October 7th uh, in front of their planning commission. That will be a review and, and, and uh, recommendations to go to the Board of Supervisors. Uh, we believe that this is our, one of our uh, less favorite LCPAs. It has a number of different uh, proposed policies that uh, we are uh, not supportive of in regards to private property rights. Um, I'm not uh, going to do a deep dive on that today. I've not been asked to do that. Uh, but suffice it to say that uh, we are watching this uh, extremely closely. And uh, we will be submitting letters uh, uh, to uh, the planning commission and doing what we can at the local level. And when it gets to the board of supervisors, that's when it's gonna be very, very important for SEC to see what we can do to improve on that document. Marine County, uh, the LCPA was approved without their current uh, coastal hazard section. Uh, we anticipate that they're gonna be moving forward very soon with the draft coastal hazards uh, 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 policies and mapping. Uh, and then they will be having public hearings in November, December. These things sometimes uh, move quicker, uh, but more often than not, more slowly than what we anticipated. And then Santa Cruz County is requesting a one-year extension to complete the LCPA coastal hazards. Uh, they need to provide support for the county language that exempts sections of the coastline. We're very excited, very excited about Santa Cruz's LCPA. Uh, their county actually has identified, they have managed retreat for certain portions of the coastline, but then they have other places uh, where they've identified specific uh, neighborhoods whereupon they are going to be, they being the county, are gonna promote the formation of GADS, geologic hazard abatement districts. And in those GADS, uh, they want those neighborhoods to get together with the support of the local government to create neighborhood shoreline protection devices. Yes, uh, rock revetments and seawalls, soft armoring also such as uh, 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 sand, beach nourishment, uh, kelp forest, uh, dune restoration, and, and perhaps offshore uh, uh, artificial reefs. So proposing a neighborhood or neighborhood plural uh, shoreline protection devices is pretty much the antithesis of uh, the direction that the Coastal Commission has been wanting these things to go. Uh, in all candor, we need to do a deeper dive uh, with the, uh, with the uh, planning staff and with the supervisors up in Santa Cruz. Uh, your staff has been prioritizing uh, where they put their resources uh, based upon the timing of these things. But we are anxious to get in there and do what we can to support this because we believe it is a crucial, crucial precedent for SEC and for the other communities up and down the coast. Also, um, we have been working with the, uh, uh, with the uh, coastal group for the League of Cities. Uh, uh, we've talked to uh, Eric, the city uh, of Santa Barbara uh, Council. We had a, a great conversation with him. Uh, we also uh, had a, uh, uh, several meetings. I personally had several meetings with Ed, the, uh, Ed Wedge, the uh, uh, Mayor of Pismo Beach, who chairs uh, the group, uh, and we're hoping that we are reading the tea leaves right, that there may be some softening with the Coastal Commission staff in regards to uh, continuing to uh, maintain such rigidity as it pertains to uh, things such as the definition of existing development and neighborhood shoreline protection devices and alternatives to manage retreat. So. I wanna make sure that uh, I'm not going long on the clock here, um, but uh, I don't think that I am. So I wanna uh, fill in a couple more uh, gaps on some things here. Um, I want you to know that our outreach has been more extensive than what I originally uh, hit. Uh, uh, your staff and, and, and uh, certain board members, we've met with uh, Congress member uh, Julia Brownlee. 
we've met uh, with assembly member Jackie Irwin. Um, we've had a number of conversations with the offices of uh, Senator Patricia Bates, uh, which uh, as, as you saw in Carla's presentation, she's uh, been uh, uh, an advocate uh, for protecting these communities uh, and, and proposing legislation to strengthen the legal rights of property owners uh, to uh, not uh, uh, be required to allow their, uh, their homes and their businesses to fall to the sea. I want to relate to you uh, that when I attended the, uh, at the League of Cities and I was sitting uh, with uh, Mayor Grisanti uh, and uh, they had uh, three speakers. Um, uh, there was Ed, of course, who was reporting on his uh, liaison work directly with the uh, coastal, two coastal commissioners, Commissioner Groom and, and, and Mike. Uh, and then uh, they had an attorney from uh, Watson Gershon, I believe it was, who was talking about uh, legal precedent issues as it pertains to, uh, uh, to this issue of sea level rise and manage retreat. And so uh, I had a little something to say on the, the topics that were being raised. Um, and uh, uh, very telling to me was the uh, was the attorney uh, for Watson Gershon, and I I uh, asked him what he thought about Article One, Section One of the California Constitution, which specifies the protection of private property is an inalienable right. And uh, he sort of blanched a little bit, and uh, because he had been talking about how there were these very open questions. Um, uh, and that he thought that the litigation might break the way of the, the inevitable litigation might break the way of the Coastal Commission. But when asked that question, he said, uh, well, that's a very good question. Um, yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a very good question. He stammered. He literally doesn't have an answer for it and because there is not an answer for it. And one of the things that, that uh, your staff and your allies on your board uh, uh, went to great lengths to do, to pass around up at the League of Cities um, conference, both in social settings and formally in meetings, was that the counties and the cities need to be very, very um, careful in regards to what they accept as new regulations uh, as promoted by the California Coastal Commission, because at the end of the day, they're the ones that are going to be holding the bag in regards to the takings litigation. And uh, when their attorney tried to assert that that wasn't necessarily clear, um, uh, people in the audience started asking me a couple questions in regards to this. And I told them, no, it's, it's actually very, very clear. Because when an LCP is adopted and those regulations are, are implemented at the local level and a permit is denied for a shoreline protection device, it stops there. It's not the Coastal Commission that will get sued. It will be the city that gets sued uh, for a, any sort of requirement that a house or a business be required to fall into the sea. And there's just really no question about that. And I think that we are getting people's attention uh, on councils and I expect we will on the Board of Supervisors as well, when these billions, and that's billions with capital B, uh, when, when the checks um, and the bills start coming due on this, uh, they're the ones that are gonna be left holding the bag and they literally do not have the money. And I just wanna to report to you that there was, uh, there was a, a tremendous amount of interest uh, in, in questions and in, in conversations up at the lead conference in regards to that. Uh, so then I will just uh, also hit up another uh, couple of the meetings and outreach that we've had. Uh, Senator Tom Umber, uh, Senator Monique Lemon, uh, Coastal Commissioners, uh, they're not really ex parte meetings uh, that, that are reportable, but suffice it to say that we are having, except for uh, if they're in, on a pending local coastal program amendment, uh, and so those are being dutifully reported when we reach out to, to people um, on the Santa Barbara uh, County LCPA, for instance, uh, I met with uh, 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 Commissioner Roberto Oranga and, and we met also uh, with Megan Harmon, but we're also having conversations uh, with uh, coastal commissioners and with senior staff, although there's not been much with the senior staff, we're about to rectify that um, over the last year because of the pandemic. 
but uh, we're meeting with the coastal commissioners on a general uh, ongoing basis uh, to uh, uh, make sure that they're hearing it. Uh, more on that in a second. Uh, I do want you to know that the first conversations I had with Mayor Ed uh, 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 Wage, I got to figure out how to say the man's name properly. Uh, at first he was, he was guarded. Uh, he feels a certain sense of cautionary restraint because he's having the monthly meetings with the two coastal commissioners and he wants to make sure that he does not divulge any confidentialities. He was our first customer at our booth up there for uh, Smart Coast uh, California. I don't know if uh, Marty and Krista and Ryan need to know that, but he made a point. As soon as they opened up the exhibition hall coming in speaking with me, and he stood there for a while and he watched different council members come by and ex-coastal commissioners come by. And um, uh, I think he's realizing, uh, and plus with the behavior in his, his uh, workshop on Thursday, um, um, uh, Waggy, thank you, uh, Cindy, for uh, helping me uh, out on that. Um, that we are here, that we are an important resource and that we are people with uh, an organization with important connections. And there's a lot of folks that are um, uh, listening to us and will be increasingly listening to us. And I think he perhaps is also uh, recognizing uh, that we as an organization, as a 501c6, can do things uh, that they can't necessarily do. Uh, and then uh, I think I already relayed to you that uh, we spoke with uh, uh, Councilman Eric Friedman, who uh, Chris has set that up, and the call started off with him being uh, politely listening and, and, and such. And, and then as we started to get into the substance of meat and potatoes, he started paying a lot more attention. And I think he realized that uh, we weren't just a, uh, a, a, a group that was um, frivolously complaining about stuff. That this was a very substantive organization. I liked him very much. I, I think he's somebody we're gonna enjoy I'll working with. I'll talk to you with. in a, probably about 20 minutes. Okay. And uh, thank you, Sue. And then um, uh, we, uh, also uh, have been working, uh, doing outreach with Beacon, uh, which is the Beach Erosion Authority for Clean Oceans and Nourishment. And I must tell you that uh, up and down the state, uh, Beacon is becoming recognized as an organization that uh, is important to talk to in regards to um, finding alternatives to protect our beach and allowing the, the sediment to get to the beach. And, and we are working with them to also uh, come up with a more moderate and holistic approach to these LCPAs. And then uh, one last thing, and uh, I can certainly uh, wax on and on, but that's not really necessary. I don't want to cut into uh, uh, an appropriate Q&A time here. Uh, one of the things that your staff and your, your uh, executive board has, has us working on and we're off to the races on is compiling all the uh, homeowners association uh, lists and contact information uh, for the condominiums and the homes up and down the state of California. It is a Herculean task that all the homeowners associations in California, there's a listing, but they're not broken down geographically at all. So we started to whittle away at that. We think that these are, are groups of property owners which have a uh, tremendous opportunity to be um, allies, natural allies for us. There's, there are folks that we need to educate as it pertains to uh, what's actually coming down the pike, showing them the vulnerability assessment maps, uh, which in very often on these, these beach and bluff top um, uh, communities show their homes going away. So uh, we think they also might be uh, uh, folks which uh, will provide opportunities uh, for fundraising for SEC that they may be willing to assist us in that. So um, with that, I think I have uh, used uh, the time frame allotted. I don't want to run long. Um, there's other things to talk about if necessary, but um, uh, with that, I think I'll wrap it up and be available for questions. Couple questions. Thank you, Don. Um, I'm going to look for a couple questions out there, but I want to point out real quick. 
Um, I think it was great, as Paul put in there, um, that you pointed out who would be picking up the tab. <laughs> uh, that's really, really important when it comes down to who gets sued in these things. So needing to know that. The other that sometimes it's important, which I think you bought out, um, is that the withdrawal is not always so quickly because you do kind of want the argument to happen because there are some things we need to get on paper, right? Get it in documentation. And so sometimes it's not always needed. Um, I think that was a, a really good thing that was pointed out as well. Uh, definitely want to thank you and Judy for your representation at the League of Cities Conference. Um, the pictures are amazing. And uh, like you said, uh, just having people know that we're there and us being that different thing that's sitting in the middle of there. You got all this stuff that's kind of similar and software and all that kind of stuff you're talking about. And then there's us. And so kind of intriguing, you get a lot of people in there. And an another little small one, HOAs. HOAs was something that CAR in the Housing uh, Home Ownership Committee years ago talked about trying to do. And the task is just phenomenal. I mean, it's huge. And so a lot of people don't know that they tried to tackle that once before and could not get that and definitely would not get it to the place that we're talking about when you go into different regions even. And so it is quite a huge task, but when that ever gets done, it will be a tremendous resource uh, to many, many people for years to come actually. Um, with that being said, I know Krista and them are probably filtering through the chat to see if anybody has any questions. You wanna go ahead, Krista, if you see anything in there? I'm sure, but before we get through to the chat, Carla, do you want to just finish up the last couple slides that you have? Oh, for the questions for Don, though? Do we want to just have all questions at the end? We can do that. Well, yeah, Don's right there, because mine kind of closes up. <clears throat> okay, um, so we do have a couple of questions. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so the first one that we have is if and how Smart Coast is aware of or dealing with FEMA's new floodplain mapping, which is affecting people who want to remodel or tear down, rebuild along the beach. Well, we're certainly aware of it, uh, but we need to differentiate something here. Um, FEMA, the other acronym, a federal emergency management agency, they, they are the ones that do uh, nationwide the uh, flood mapping uh, uh, for flood hazards. And very often people think about that along the lines of the floodplains of the Mississippi, or even in a lot of your communities, you might be surprised how some of the drainages out there, uh, they show a hundred year flood is looking like uh, uh, the Missouri River, truly. Um, now, the, what a lot of people are not necessarily aware of is they also have flood maps with different zones along the coastline for uh, uh, storm events, storm surges, king tides, uh, a hurricane off of Hawaii, um, and how that all comes together. And with those different flood zone levels, they, uh, those are very dispositive as it pertains to getting your flood insurance. And that has a huge, huge impact. Uh, to uh, a number of our constituents out there that have beach homes and homes on, on the bluffs. Be advised that the FEMA maps are not built upon the sea level rise mapping, which is being done by the Coastal Commission. It's an important distinction. I'm not saying SCC doesn't have skin in the game because you very well may. And that's a decision for you to make because over just a couple of years ago, uh, FEMA came back and they remapped the areas. Now, some communities were very active in regards to being involved and some just got blindsided. For instance, Newport Beach was extremely active. They went uh, and um, they, they sent their lobbyists uh, to uh, Washington, D.C. They talked to me about it. They had engineering. And so they negotiated the levels for those FEMA maps. Uh, other communities uh, such as Malibu, uh, we alerted them to it, uh, we being uh, Don Schmitz, not SEC, and, and some coastal engineers, uh, pretty late in the game, got everybody's attention. They started working on it. 
And, and the mapping is, it, you'd think it would all be basic and simple and mathematical, but it, it, it's not. There's places on the coastline where just because of the data points right next to each other, one property owner is shown as being 30 feet underwater with a storm <laughs> surge, and the other one right next to it is has two feet of flood water. And obviously, uh, that's just physically impossible. Uh, now, what is happening with sea level rise and the mapping is on the vulnerability assessments, one of the things that the Coastal Commission and, and other agencies are, are promoting and trying to get done, and there's a scientific basis for this, is to then do some sort of analysis on sea level rise and then put the flood, FEMA floodplain mm -hmm. maps or uh, flood waves, the X and O's and the A's and whatever, on top of the sea level rise. Uh, this will have uh, dramatic impacts again in regards to the ability of, of our constituents to get insurance. And there's another thing that I need to look into. Uh, um, I was uh, listening to uh, the news uh, this morning, driving into the office, and there was an announcement about the ins insurance agencies uh, moving uh, the uh, flood insurance um, and fire hazard insurance uh, in California to a, uh, a risk management basis as opposed to a collective basis. I do not have a professional opinion uh, this morning because I just heard about it uh, on what's happening with that, but uh, certainly so instructed, I will, I will dig a little bit deeper and get that to you. Well, as you can see, <laughs> there's a lot going on with that. <laughs> Carla, one other thing, um, sorry for interrupting, but in regards to the FEMA maps, one of the things you will see on a lot of these coastal cities and counties is they have in their LCPs specific regulations in regards to the development and it being not at risk from these revised FEMA maps, which is just good land use planning. I don't think we have a problem with that per se, but even taking sea level rise out of it, you now have entire neighborhoods based upon these maps where the regulations and, and uh, design standards that they have no longer are functional at all. So this is in fact, under the local coastal program uh, process, as well as the local level, this is, uh, is and will remain a very big issue for uh, these coastal communities and our constituents. As I said earlier, coming to a city near you, right? Not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, but great that um, you were able to point out for that person with the question um, just how serious that is and that the, and the connection between and that that's not. So um, we're on it. Um, with that being said, I can definitely tell you um, all of the stuff that Don talked about, if that seems like a lot, trust me, that is just a fraction of what's been happening in Smart Coast. This stuff is nowhere near over. It just means... and, and we're growing, so that's a good thing, but it also means that means there's a whole lot of concerns when it comes to the coast. And that in itself is another problem entirely. Um, I think Krista has this thing with, yeah, we're growing. We are growing faster and bigger than we could have ever even imagined. And while we knew that the issues were there, um, we just didn't know what the response would be. And I, I think it was just like the right timing where people came in and just were kind of, we need help. And so there's that, you know, place where we were able to find, we can help these people. And so we've been able to touch a little bit of everywhere from the top of California on down uh, to the end of it. Um, with that being said, we are preparing to grow much more. So next year, um, yeah, growing, 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 growing. Um, we plan on, of course, continuing the dialogue with our local government and our coastal, uh, coastal commission, uh, expanding research and creating databases that will help us increase our grassroots efforts so that when we call on that call for action and we need some of those um, locals to put in some effort, we'll be able to do that. We'll have a, a, a connection and a basis there uh, and base and better yet, a methodology to be able to get the information out and get the word out um, and get people in numbers. Because as Don talked about, you you seen the one where you got over a hundred and something letters. That's huge when you can get that to happen. And so um, those are the things that really speak 
to the Coastal Commission and your legislators when you can do that. Um, we are also working on hiring an executive director. So that'll give us a, a dedicated staff member, of course, that will help us to continue in our growing. Uh, and we're also working on increasing our funding opportunities. Um, funding opportunities, they, they're out there. <laughs> we're fighting to get them. Um, but of course, we know in order to do that, all this stuff, including that fabulous consultant we have there, it all takes money, right? <laughs> We're not just showing up. And I, I mean, you guys can see he's a wealth of knowledge, um, but it, it does. It, it, it takes money. He has a business, you know, at the end of the day. And um, so they've created some investment tiers for members as well as those for investing entities. Um, our members range anywhere from like 1500 to 25,000 with special perks. Of course, you know, membership, how it goes, you get some things with different levels. Uh, the investment entities would include, um, some of the local coastal municipalities, HOAs that can become members and the same stay abreast of this information, help their communities, um, business associations, some private businesses. So we're looking to just like touch everybody that we can, right? Every dollar is going to count. Um, this is how we can be able to fight and continue to fight rather uh, countywide issues, but countywide issues require some countywide monies at the end of the day, right? So um, we'll be putting those things together coming soon to a, a city or county near you, my favorite, because that's what happens with the coast is this stuff is not going anywhere. Um, we did receive grant funding from NAR, the NAR Issues Mobilization and CAR Impact Funds this year. And so that was great. It's able to help out with our annual contributions um, that we get from our associations as well. And some individual members we do have that already uh, contribute to SCCA. Um, but no, we are still a one of a kind organization and we're providing the service that is not replicated, duplicated, anything, anywhere else. We are unique. There is no one else who is doing what we are doing today. And so with that being said, we're hoping to roll all this stuff out pretty soon. You can still connect with us if you haven't seen it. I know a lot of you have been on here. We thank you for your participation and being faithful and loyal and always coming back. Uh, that helps us. It keeps us motivated and encouraged to get out here and still fight the fight. There's our um, QR codes and the addresses for the website, our Instagram and Facebook. You can find us there. And again, remember to sign up for the newsletters if you aren't getting them. And if there are any special things of interest, of course, if you um, haven't seen it or heard it, always feel free to email us. Uh, that's on the website as well. And we will definitely answer your questions. If not, we'll find it if we don't already have it. So um, again, thank you guys for participating. And with that being said, I don't think Arla, we have we any do, last questions. We, we do have a couple more questions. Okay, go ahead. Um, one is, can the, AO, the AOR should be able to provide a list of the HOAs within their association, question mark. If any of your associations do have information on the HOAs, I think if you could share that with us, if you're allowed to, that would help us a lot. <laughs> and we'd be able to kind of cut down some of that time and, and yeah. intensity on that project. And better than HO, uh, better than associations, because I don't know many associations who normally keep that, not in, in your larger cities, I don't, I don't know, but you, better than that would be a good escrow officer. <laughs> That's who definitely will have heads up on what uh, HOAs are in particular regions. That would be and really helpful information, and we can create something on the website to input that information. Uh, responding to one of the other questions on there. So why don't you give us a, a, a week or so, but if you can gather that information and find someone who's willing to input that to our website, that would be a huge help for us because that's Great. really the next outreach program we need to work on. And then I think Don wanted to reply to the Marine Sanctuary question in the chat as well, Carla. Hey, real quick on the HOA though, can we put to denote whether it is the actual HOA or if it's the managing company? the property manager, because it's two different things. And you might have both within the association. Okay, uh, Don. Yeah, just very briefly, uh, I'm not uh, up on the 
All the gory details, Cindy, as it pertains to a marine sanctuary off the coast of Pismo. Uh, I would say a couple things in response to that. These things are very often uh, studied and sometimes they become real. Sometimes they get studied for years and years. And I'd be interested in hearing more about that and, and we could take a quick look into it. I would also say that, uh, a couple things. Um, the um, uh, Your staff and your executive board have uh, uh, tried to be careful about too much mission creep. Uh, there are millions of different uh, topics uh, that are very, very important to uh, uh, people up and down the coast in, in the real estate uh, community. Um, and only so many resources to go around. Uh, but I would say that a marine sanctuary can have uh, specific implications in regards to a community's ability to promote neighborhood shoreline protection devices and uh, uh, alternatives such as offshore reefs which um, in fact, uh, for the Marine uh, Sanctuary located off of Ventura in Los Angeles County, uh, sediment control structures such as reefs and groins are specifically allowed, but you wanna make sure that that verbiage is in there so it can't be used to prevent a local jurisdiction from, from uh, hitting those sorts of things. So um, happy to take a look at uh, any uh, potential Marine Sanctuaries coming down the pike. I know another big one off of Pismo that's happening, um, uh, that's not exactly related, but they're proposing a giant offshore wind farm up there um, in that area. So it, it would be interesting to see how that interfaces with the uh, marine sanctuary. But I think uh, clearly what would be uh, a direct line to what uh, uh, SCC is, is focusing in on is the ability of individual property owners and communities to protect their communities from wave attack. Thank we do have another that. written question and then we can get to those who want to ask questions if you're okay with that, Carla. Absolutely. Um, I see Leon had a hand up. It went down, but let's do the we, written one and then we'll take a couple hands. Perfect. So um, can you, because this isn't a loaded question or anything, can you discuss the reaction to SB1? My understanding was that it was a negative for the Coastal Commission having more clout. Am I incorrect in that interpretation? Is that for me or Carla? That was a, that was a Carla's. <laughs> oh. uh, I'm happy. I'm happy to speak towards it. Well, Christy could have Chris could have answered that one. In fact, well, I, I will I, leave that up to you too. <laughs> all right. So SB one Aikens, uh, which was uh, signed, uh, uh, and, and that requires uh, uh, planning uh, for uh, avoiding uh, in, in mitigating adverse uh, impacts uh, through statutory authorities. That means means regulations. It means taking into account um, uh, shoreline uh, uh, processes from sea level rise. I believe we, we had a watched position on that one. Um, I think that uh, the one that we opposed was uh, uh, SB 433, which was uh, Senator Allen in regards to the increased uh, penalties. We also had a, uh, um, a watched position on SB 83, which was also Ben Allen. Ben was a very busy gentleman uh, in this legislative section uh, with things relating to shoreline processes. And that was to create the revolving loan program. All right. Do you see the other questions? Because I'm, I'm. So one more okay. just is seems to be most important reaching out to the HOA so that the actual homeowners who investment is at stake are the ones to get involved. Not clear a management company would get the importance of private property rights. Absolutely true. Um, but I have to note that because a, a lot of individuals that will submit information don't understand that there's a property manager a lot of times and an association that the two are different, which is why I said for us to denote which one is which. And just as you're absolutely correct. And just as a clarification, CAR was opposed to SB1. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have some questions that would be like to ask for live. We have Leon and then we also have Janet Caminetti after that. Okay, Leon. Okay, well, thank you for having this. Um, I posted the question about the formatting of how, because uh, I live in Imperial Beach right on the border with Mexico and uh, we have a, 
a very active uh, community that is opposed to uh, uh, um, managed retreat. Uh, and basically because it really doesn't really ap apply to our area. Um, but uh, so how do we, is there a format? I, I had to step away. Did you answer this already? Where is there a format, whether it's an Excel spreadsheet or do we go to your website and put the list of people that we have that are uh, interested in smart in supporting Smart Coast? We're going to be creating a form specifically for HOAs. Give us about a week for that because we do need to put it into the system and so forth. But we'll be creating something just specifically for HOAs and hopefully be able to start gathering that information. Can I comment also on these marine sanctuaries that offshore, uh, just a little bit what I know that from what we have, um, just real, there's, if, if I can. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, well, um, experience with the marine sanctuaries are generally great idea. We're all for protecting our marine life. And the idea is to have places where there's no fishing uh, so that we have a baseline of reproductive uh, areas that produce uh, uh, you know, future generations. Generally, these are supposed to be offshore far enough away from the coastline so that people can still do their recreational activities such as fishing or such as kayaking. Um, uh, and that is because then the public can use their coastline, but the vast majority of the offshore areas are not accessible by the public. And so therefore they don't affect the public, but they still provide that service. So um, uh, you'll find them like at Point Loma in San Diego. There is no access because of military work. And so they put it out there because the public can't access it by foot. And so those general guidelines are good because if you put them so on the coastline, then essentially you can't surf fish, you can't, you can't do really anything. And so those are some of the points that I've ran into regarding those sanctuaries. They're a good idea as long as they're off the coast in a way so that the public can still enjoy the coastline, period. Thank you. Thank you, Leon. I think we have one other hand we're gonna take. I see some people, let's see. I believe Janet well, I don't see the other had a hand. question. Is it Janet? Yeah. Hey, Janet. Hi. Um, I have clients in Seacliff Beach Colony and in Solomar and along Faria. What I'm what I'm finding out right now, I have one that's listed and one that was just sold, is that because of the new FEMA map, for example, and and I'm just getting to learn all about this, is that if you want to remodel, what it demands is that you appraise the, the structure, not the location or the land, just the structure. And let's just say for grins, it appraises at 500,000. That means that somebody can only spend 50% of that, $250,000 to remodel whatever that is. The problem that the, my client is having in Solomar is that because of this new um, plane map, he wanted to tear this house down and rebuild. Well, he has to build it 18 to 20 feet higher than the base, whatever that base is. So I'm only bringing it to everyone's attention because if you're not aware of the impact of this floodplain map and you do sell beachfront like I do, it's extremely important. My list for my seller in Seacliff, it, it really affects the value trying to sell this property now completely. And then of course, for the person in Solomar who wanted to tear it down and basically start over, it, he's now going to have to do a remodel and it is going to greatly affect what he would do to that house. So um, I'm just diving into all the idiosyncrasies of this map and what it means, but Don, I'm sure is aware of it. And it's just something that maybe SmartCo should be aware of. And I don't know, you're probably going to get more questions about it. So just for everybody's awareness and dismay. Right, right. Thank well, you, Janet. Uh, very, very good. Um, 
Well, it's time for us to wrap up. I know that earlier Krista put a flyer in the chat, um, so just some information that if you needed something tangible that you wanted to share with other people, other uh, those that you know around the coastline or just to share Smart Coast uh, with them, you can do that. You can also do a personal contribution as well, uh, smartcoastca.org. Um, that definitely, definitely, I, I tell you, every single dime really definitely, definitely helps. Um, again, go back in the chat. That flyer is there. Uh, just some tangible, you know, information that you can pass out. Share it with your friends, your neighbors, any of those people in the coast. If you know an HOA or something that is, you know, closely related, share that with them and just direct them to the website because I'm sure they'll go there and they'll just see a wealth of information that will intrigue them themselves if they have any interest on the coastline. Um, Katie, I see you there. I am going to round out with you because we're past our time. So I'm gonna let you go really quick and we will call it done for the day. Appreciate you guys all. Thank, Thank you. Thanks Carla for letting me just say this because I see so many new faces on this call and this, call, this cause is so near and dear to my heart. But the website has so much information. I would hope everybody on here make sure that your AE and your GAD go carefully through this website, learn about it, because most of this has been around, but this is the first time I've ever seen realtors come together and really work to help us in our business. So I just hats off to everybody. And please, please go back home and learn what's there. Thank you, Katie. Very much appreciate it. Thank you all. Again, like she said, smartcoastca.org. Look forward to seeing you guys in a little bit. Bye.